Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of What's in the Box. This time, we're going to be looking at something that I've been eagerly awaiting for a decent amount of time here. It was actually supposed to release la end of last year, but it was delayed until, um, I believe, the final week of... I want to say February, I'm sure, and we are going to be bothered significantly in this video by mm -hmm. my cat, Leo. Well, because if I'm opening a package or anything like that, he has to investigate. This product is from our friends over at Retro Fighters, who specialize in creating brand new modern controllers for old consoles. And man, it's been a while. Uh, and this is something that I have really wanted. They have, of course, done Dreamcast controllers. They have done PlayStation 1 controllers, PlayStation 2 controllers, and yes, PlayStation 3 controllers. But finally, here we have the Hunter, which is a new wireless controller designed for the original Xbox. You can also use it on your Switch and PC. Uh, it has Hall Effect sensors uh, for the joysticks and the triggers. It also has a really nice little design update. We know, of course, the original Xbox has the uh, black and white buttons, which uh, was a strange choice, but I'm going to assume that that choice was made because uh, they didn't want the controller to be too similar to the PlayStation design. So we got six face buttons instead of four and um, four shoulder buttons. Instead, we got the two triggers uh, and six face buttons, which was fine. You know, on the original Duke Xbox, they were above the buttons and on the redesigned um, controller, the controller S, which is just more closely modeled after, uh, they were moved to below the main face buttons. Um, this is an interesting design. Not only do you have the black and white buttons under the uh, main face buttons, you also have shoulder buttons. So we actually have the shoulder button functionality on an original Xbox controller. Now the trouble with buying uh, old controllers for old systems these days is most of them, uh, unless you get really lucky, are expensive and well they look like somebody has fisted themselves with them and then chewed on the analog sticks um i've had lots of experience over the years of you know buying controllers especially for consoles that aren't that well not that uh popular back in the day like the original xbox um yeah, they're hard to get and they're in awful condition and it wasn't that long ago that my Duke controller was knocked out of its place by a certain orange boy that we're looking at right now and uh, was knocked onto the floor and smashed. The controller still works, but it's basically fucked. So anyway, we find in the package, we have the dongle, which is what you connect into your Xbox, and it is firmware updatable. This is also a wireless controller, which has 10 hours of battery life. I haven't used mine for 10 hours. I've had it for a few weeks now. Um, well, yeah, nearly two weeks now. And you also get a second dongle for connecting it to the Switch and the PC. I have not tried the functionality of the PC and the Switch because for me personally, there's no point. I literally just bought this for my uh, modded OG Xbox. We also get an included USB charging cable and you can also use it to update the firmware. Now, you may be wondering, why didn't I just remove the orange boy? I did several times. He really doesn't care. I'm opening a package and he's all about it. So this controller is actually quite light. The D-pad on it is extremely good. It's uh, a massive improvement over the original Xbox controller uh, and I'm reasonably happy with it. Everything on it feels nice. It doesn't feel cheap. It's nicely textured and you can see the shoulder buttons and the triggers kind of are more designed over the Xbox series controller than the original um, Xbox 
controller or even the 360 controller. They've done a nice job with it. The buttons are also pressure sensitive. And here it is um, next to a series controller, which by the way, I really do like the series controllers. They are fantastic. Uh, and they've taken all of the nice designs from the modern Xbox controller and kind of retrofitted them back into a modern style Xbox controller. Now this thing retails for 45 pounds, I believe, and it's absolutely worth it. I would rather um, spend 45 pounds on this than spend 20 pounds on a original Xbox controller, if you can find one that may or may not work. Now there it is next to the 360 controller, which for a lot of people was the king of controllers back in the mid 2000s. Here it is next to my uh, Elite Series 2 controller. The Elite Series 2 controller is phenomenal. Uh, a bit unfair to compare it to that, to be honest, but you know. Um, so the standard 360 controller that everybody loves, that's my Gears of War edition there. Um, it's nice. But it, we've bested it, I believe. Now, there it is next to a original Xbox um, controller there. That is the S model, the redesigned. And you can see it's very similar. Very, very similar. It does have a superior um, D-pad, as I've mentioned before, and the analog sticks are nicer, brand new. Now, you can see, uh, obviously, the original Xbox controller does not have the shoulder buttons. It also has a different placement for the start and back buttons. Now, let's go plug this sucker in, shall we, and see how she handles. I've got my modded Xbox here, though it's did die a while ago, but I've replaced the hard drive on it and she's good to go. Now to turn it on, you just hit the middle button. It syncs literally instantly, which is fantastic. And let's go try some games, shall we? Let's have a fiddle. I was wondering what to try. Blood Wake is always a really good um, little play test. You have to forget, uh, forgive me for this uh, janky ass recording here. Uh, it was kind of like, I was like, how can I kind of show this off? I didn't really want to go back to my capture card or anything. I thought this, this will work fine. So I did notice one thing when playing uh, Blood Wake, for instance. I noticed that the there is a considerable dead zone with the analog triggers you have to push them in a approximately uh, I would say like 25% before they register. Now, other people in reviews have also picked this up. I'm curious to see whether they're going to update that with a firmware patch. I don't believe there are any firmware updates for this controller yet, but I haven't looked. The product is literally fresh off the shelves. But I had no issues playing Blood Wake at all with it. Um, to be honest, I didn't even really notice the uh, dead, dead zones for a while. It was only when I was uh, really getting into some combat and I was like, hmm, hang on. They don't quite feel as responsive. Now, I will say in the same breath that they work absolutely fine. And here you can see I can push the black button to um, change the UI around, or I can use the uh, shoulder button. And the same with the white button, that change views, or I can use the shoulder buttons. Now, uh, in some games, like the white button isn't, uh, or the white and black buttons aren't used that much, but in other games they are, and it, it's really inconvenient to actually, you know, reach your thumb down. I've got really big hands as it is. Um, so in some ways I did, kind of prefer the original Duke controller because the buttons were above the main um, face buttons uh, and I, I just found it easier to stretch them out. Stretch them out? Ooh my. I of course mean uh, stretch my thumb up. But yeah, this game is absolutely controlling perfectly. No issues at all. In fact, maybe even slightly better because the analog stick tension is that of a brand new controller, not a damn near 30 year old one. Well, that's a bit much, a 20 year old controller. And it's very responsive, very good. Anyway, let's switch over to another one of my favorite games, Amped. Now, my God, Amped is a really good shout if you're trying to uh, test out a new controller. It was my go-to for a while because this game uh, is a snowboarding game. It's a Microsoft title. Yeah, Microsoft, 
You remember? You remember when you made snowboarding games? Yeah? Yeah, well, I remember. And do and you know what? Do you remember when they were, they were actually really good as well? Yeah, no, no, just me. Okay. So this game's absolutely fantastic. And uh, I actually had a really good time playing it with this controller. In fact, I probably played it for a little bit too long, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, everything was tight. It was responsive. The analog sticks literally felt like they were brand new. Um, the triggers actuated fine because this game doesn't really rely on using um, the actual analog ability. Uh, it, they were fine. You know, you push them halfway in and they work. And usually you just depress them completely, bottom, bottoming them out. Uh, yeah, I kind of fumbled here a few times. I haven't played this game for, I don't know, a couple of years, but man, the second I fire up this game, you know, I'm back, I'm a kid. It's 2000 and, what would that have been, 2001, sitting in the glow of my uh, CRT TV and having a wicked time, just taking it in turns to blast through this game. And this game has a considerable amount of content as well. Like Amp 2 and 3 really were better, but this game for the time was a absolute graphical powerhouse. Um, and, you know, with the deforming snow and the snow trails that you could make and the massive sprawling maps. Yeah, this game was actually something special going back and looking at it now. And it really is a shame that, you know, a lot of these sort of um, different titles, should we say, variety titles just don't seem to exist anymore. So, and next up, we have a Konami game. We have Air Force Delta Storm, which is a game that I have just done a Titan tries of. Uh, and this game, this is where I was testing it out, and I was like, man, this actually feels really good. And I've got a feeling I actually played this game for way longer than I probably should have. Uh, and I had no idea what the controls are either because I don't own a physical copy of this. I just have downloaded a ROM because that's the best thing to do with the original Xbox. There's a lot of rare titles on this thing. And again, I had no issues with the analog controls and the sticks felt really good. The buttons, the main uh, face buttons actuate perfectly. There's nice satisfying little depress click to them very happy with this thing so far again absolutely zero connection issues and i have played this uh used this controller like a little bit more for titan tries and whatnot and some of the videos that i've recorded and i haven't had any issues at all the only thing that i could find is somebody did get one I think they ordered two, or they were sent to by reviewers. Gee, imagine that. And uh, one of the ones they were sent, uh, the one of the bumpers wasn't quite right compared to um, the others and his other controller. He was also sent. Gee, must be nice. But anyway, everything with this was absolutely smooth sailing, no issues whatsoever. And I managed to stem the tide of this invasion pretty handily, to be honest. And then whilst I was playing this, I was like, you know what? This game is absolutely banging. I'm going to um, cover this next week for Titan Tries. And one of you guys also messaged me, I forget your name, I apologize, mentioning about uh, a sequel to this game. I was like, wait, I know they made one on the Dreamcast and then I was vaguely aware of this one, but you're telling me they actually made a third game? And yeah, yeah, they did. Except the Dreamcast game for us was called Deadly Skies. And then this was called like Air Force Delta Storm or something. And the third game is actually called Air Force Delta Storm something. But over in Europe, it was called Deadly Skies 3. So uh, I may have acquired that and maybe just about to play it and record it. But sadly, of course, this was an Xbox game. 
and uh, from what I can understand, Deadly Skies 3 only actually released on PlayStation 2, which, you know, made me a very sad man because I would have rather tried this controller out a little bit more and played it on my preferred 6th gen platform. The 6th gen... Yeah, 6th gen. I always get 6th, 5th and 6th gen mixed up. Of course, 5th gen was PlayStation and all that lot. But yeah, absolutely no issues at all. Nothing's missing a beat. Uh, the only thing um, that I didn't do on this game is we have it set to the bog standard novice controls, but that's because I didn't realize you could, like in an Ace Combat game, you can actually change and have advanced controls, and then you can have pro controls on this as well, which really gives you a lot more options. In hindsight, really should have had a look in the options, but I was just trying to get some footage, yo. So anyway... That concludes my look at and quick test of the Xbox controller, the Hunter, which is available to buy now. Uh, a little bit harder to get hold of if you're in the UK. It, they did drop it in two colors as well. They dropped it in black, which of course I have, and they dropped it in translucent green, which, well, if you know your Xboxes, they did a translucent green Xbox and you can still find them. They are horrendously expensive and their translucent green controllers have a price to match. Uh, so I did want to get that one and I may still get it in time. I might get this one and then buy the translucent green one afterwards just to have a spare backup because I don't know how long these things are going to be in stock for, you know. But um, yeah, the only problem with the translucent green one is everywhere I looked. Oh yeah, I forgot. I tried Time Split is Future Perfect as well. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah, so I was going to try as I remember because I was like, yeah, let's try a, a, a shooter. Yeah, you got to try a shooter, right? And I didn't have Halo installed on this console for reasons. I guess I'm just... I guess I'm just too used to having the Master Chief collection if I fancy to scratch the Halo itch. But um, the translucent green controller is just not available. I guess it's just sold out everywhere. That's the one I guess that everybody wants and I get it. That's fine. But if it ever does restock, I will be taking a look at it. Now, also, this was the first time I played Future Perfect in, well, probably 10 plus years and it is fantastic and I, I think actually this is the game that I noticed that there is quite a bit of travel before the triggers actuate. Uh, and yeah, I was like, wait a minute. But this game is glorious. Again, it's such a huge upgrade over Time Splitters 2. And Time Splitters 2 was a tremendous upgrade over the first game. We have proper full on reload animations now. We're still getting that silky smooth first um, 60 frames a second. And it is butter. Absolute butter. Um, the maps are really they're quite small to be fair actually but they are nicely detailed texture work has gone up uh, but i do believe from what i can remember the xbox version was where it was at with the time splitters games that they were the best version gamecube versions were pretty good but once you start stepping all the way down to the ps2 which you know most people played back in the day but that was by far the uh, most anemic console not the worst console ps2 was a beast in its time but um out of the three main machines yeah the the ps2 she uh she didn't have as much in the tank as the others it's just the developers they they did some wonderful things with that machine but um, yeah, so playing this with the triggers and using the analog sticks, I kind of completely dominated this match with no issues whatsoever. Now, anybody that remembers when I did Silent Hill 2, I actually played that on my original Xbox. Uh, and I think that if, that, if memory serves, that's when I kind of just recently got one of my Xboxes. 
uh, I think, I can't remember now, it's been so long ago, but halfway through that LP, um, I was having awful issues with the controller, like the triggers kept automatically spamming and things like that, which actually was a very common thing with Xbox controllers, original ones. I had it happen plenty back in the day, especially on a game called Gun Valkyrie, where you relied on the triggers to actually boost a around platforms. It's like an anime kind of waifu shooter thing. Uh, made by Sega. Uh, apparently it's quite a good game. Maybe we should visit that one day. But yeah, I had some really bad issues with that back in the day. Anyway, guys, that's my two cents. I hope you enjoyed it. I would absolutely recommend this controller if it appeals to you anyway. 